Hello everyone, this is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I am Daniel Goodwill, and over there is John. Hi John. Hey. So how's your summer been? Okay. It's been crazy. Yeah, that's about the word to describe it. <laughs> crazy would be the word that we would use. <laughs> Exciting, entertaining, but crazy. Yeah. It's had its ebbs and flows. But... As we sit here, as the summer dwindles down, it's time to focus on hockey again. Yep. We took our uh, first summer off since 2018 as a podcast, which it seems odd that I that I, I just stayed enthralled in it that long. You know. <laughs> right. We, you know, um, we had had co-hosts come and go and. Stuff like that, but I, I stayed in it, and this year I'm just like, I need time. <laughs> so that is why, folks, uh, you guys didn't see much from us this summer, as I uh, needed time away a little bit. Uh, but um, but we're going to get into some stuff here today. Uh, first off, we have the 2024. I know, we're going back a little. Mm -hmm. um, a lot. <laughs> uh, draft. So, uh, the first round pick in the draft for the Nashville Predators was uh, Igor Shurin. Uh, Igor Shurin, uh, 18 years old, out of Russia. Uh, he plays for the uh, Yaroslav locomotive team in the KHL. He plays center and right wing. He's a left-handed shot. Uh, he is signed through the KHL through 2025-26. But I think after that, he'll probably come over here and start working his way towards the NHL. Right. Obviously, that's always the end goal. Um, he was drafted 22nd overall. Um, most scouts had him at... Actually, he hit right where the NHL center scouting had him. Uh, 22. Uh, McKenzie had him at 34. Uh, McKean had him at 30. Uh, Craig Button had him at 31. FC Hockey had him at 50. ISS Hockey had him at 26, and Elite Prospect had him at 63. Um, last year, he was with, well, Yaroslav Lokomotiv. Played three games in the K. Um, didn't do a whole bunch uh, with it. Um... Three games, minus one, no points. Uh, last year for the uh, youth boat, uh, team, he played one game, scored a goal, and they called him up. <laughs> he then played 42 games, uh, 22 goals, 30 assists, 52 points, 108 penalty minutes. Wait, no. Yeah. 108 penalty minutes. Uh, 35, uh, plus 35, he went 19 games in the playoffs for them as well. Uh, 5 goals, 18 assists, 23 points, 30 penalty minutes, and 50, plus 15. A little lower than I'd like, but solid. He's young. Yeah. Moving on. Ugh. Alright, then we got uh, Teddy Stiga. He played for the U.S. National Development Team. Uh, he is in Boston College now, so uh, he'll be an alumni like uh, right there with uh, Fabro. He's out of Sudbury, Massachusetts. Uh, 18, uh, 5'10", left winger. Uh, according to this, he's a cerebral tactician with a playmaking ability and a two-way forward. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Tommy Novak, if you put it that way. Yeah. Like a really good hockey IQ. Right. Um, with, the, with the U.S. National Development Program, he played 61 games, 36 goals, 43 assists, 79 points, 42 penalty minutes, and a plus 47. With the juniors part of the USHL, he played in the he played 27 games, had 18 goals, 12 assists, 38 points, and a plus 20 with 18 penalty minutes. 
Uh, he also played for the USA Under-18 team where he was the assistant captain. Um, he had seven games played, six goals, five assists, 11 points, so that's over a point per game, well over. Uh, six penalty minutes plus 15. He will, like I said, be at Boston College this year. So if you're in the Boston area and you're a French fan, go check him out. All right, Vigo Gustafson. By the way, that was our, one of our second round draft picks. This is a third. Uh, he is 17. He is out of somewhere I cannot pronounce, Sweden. I'm not even gonna. I don't want to butcher it. <laughs> uh, he is a defenseman, shoots left. He is contracted under a junior contract. Um, according to this, he's a defensive defenseman, a physical defenseman. Uh, those are his uh, play types. Um, last year for uh, HB71J20, he played 70 games, 3 goals, 16 assists, with a plus 15. He also played in two playoff games where he was a minus three. He did play in the J18 as well, where he was uh, five games, one goal, two assists, three points, and a plus two. Um, it'll be interesting to see if he makes the big league this year. Nice. Um, at 17, that's kind of a little... He shares Alex's birthday. My One of my kids. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, he probably has one of the worst birthdays in American history. Um, but I I'm looking forward to it. Six foot two, so he's only seventeen, so he could probably go up maybe six three, six four, possible. Right. Um, and he's gonna pack on weight. Right. You're gonna like to see that at like two oh five to two ten. Yeah. And for him, at his current size, 205 to 210, uh, right now they got him at 194. So, a little more muscle, not blubber like me. <laughs> um, then we got Miguel Marquez. He's playing for uh, Lethbridge uh, Hurricanes in the WHL Western Hockey League in Canada. Uh, he is 18 right wing, shoots right handed. Uh, offensive forward, uh, according to this player type, offensive forward, puck, hit, puck handler, and playmaker, in no particular order. Offensive skill is the name of the game, and that is what he has. Uh, 76 games for the Lace Bridge Hurricane. Uh, or 76, 67. Darn my dyslexia. Um, with 28 goals. 46 assists and 74 points with 57 penalty minutes and a plus 13. He also played in two playoff games with one point. Right. Previously played for them uh, 59 games with 20 points and 10 games with 6. Um, went to prep school at St. George and Delta Hockey Academy. Um, They'll probably get started pretty soon here. Uh, KHL starts next week. No? Yeah. Alrighty, hey. on, to, uh, on to the guy I cannot pronounce your last name. Well, I was going to say before we get to this one, Hockey Locker, correct? Yes, Hockey Locker is our sponsor. <laughs> yes. Again uh, this year. Yes. Thank you. Um, Toyo 2, West Hart Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. Alright, so back to this. The next guy, I'm going to have to take a stab. Hiroki Yosef. Uh, 18 years old, out of Langley, British Columbia, Canada. Right wing. He was drafted 94th overall in the third round. Um, according to his player type, he's a heavy shooter with a physical forward ability. He is 6'3", 198 pounds, and shoots where he handed. Uh, he won a uh, championship, I believe, in June. Years. Like, like, Bantham. Like, just above Bantham. Uh, the British Columbia Hockey League. 
He won the uh, championship in that league. Uh, last year, he played for the Kelowna Rockets. Of the Why does that team sound so familiar? Do we have another prospect that played with us? Uh, Juno came from the Kelowna. Juno and Sisson both came okay. from the Kelowna Rockets in the past. So we've actually had a pretty heavy, and they're mostly forwards. Right. Like we've been drafting forwards out of, out of that system for a while. And Kelowna's done a really well job with two-way forwards. Uh, he had 68 games played. He had uh, 21 goals, 29 assists, 50 points with 51 penalty minutes. So he had 50 points and 51 penalty minutes with a plus five. He did play in 11 games in the playoffs with five assists and 13 penalty minutes played as well. He will play for the Colorado Rockets this year. Ah, goalie. I like goalies. All right, then we have Jacob Miloda. Uh, he's going to play for the Cape Breton in uh, Eagles in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. So he is actually over already. He's, he's right. not in the Czech Republic. So that'll add to some interesting to see how that goes. Um, and following the drafts, this is the second straight draft with a goal. Yep, in the fourth round, actually. Wait, no, we drafted one last year in the fifth. But the... We've gotten lucky with late round goalies. Yeah. It's weird, but we have. Uh, he's six foot one, 170, catch the left. Um, sounds like he stays in the crease a lot. Yeah, so he's the reverse of someone else. <laughs> um, so for the Cape Fred uh, Eagles last year, the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, he played 33 games, went 18-11 and won with a 2.82 goals against average and a 90.5 save percentage. He also played at the uh, U18 World Juniors. Uh, five games went two and three with a 3.05 goals against average with an 88.2. Um, this year he's already playing in international games where he's one and one with a 3.84 goals against average and an 84.6 save percentage. All right. Not doing too well in the U20 league, but. There's time for improvement, and the time is, well, now. <laughs> right. Um, it's still early in the year. Uh, first year after being drafted, sometimes you'll see guys dip. Other times you'll see guys do really well, so we'll see what happens. Um, and... Oh, I got this right. All righty. Uh, we have Eric Falson. He's at the University of Minnesota. Ah, it's pronounced Paulson. Got it. It's P-H. All righty. Um, ah, his daddy was a former player as well. Uh, he is 6'1", heavy shooter, playmaker, and two-way forward. He's 20, so he'll probably be here fairly quickly. Probably one year in college and then done. Um, last year he played for the Dubuque Fighting Saints of the USHL. He had 57 games played, 28 goals, 44 assists, 72 points, and a plus 23 for the playoffs. He went one goal, four assists, five points in 11 games with a plus five, so... And he's part of a league earlier, pre-show, we were doing a little bit of studying, and he's part of a league that I'd never heard of called TV Puckin'. Yeah. So, learn something new every day. There we go. All right, and the last guy the Preds drafted was Vigo, or Vigo, <laughs> Victor Doringer. See, now he's going to see this and never let me go. Never let it down. Mm -hmm. It's all right. I make mistakes, too. 
All right, he's 17, shoots right-handed. He's a left wing, so he's going to be on his strong side all the time. Uh, six foot three. They said heavy shooter, power forward. Um, this year he will be playing for the Prolanda J20. So he'll be playing in juniors. A uh, small chance he could make the big league, but last year for the regional, he played 17 games with 32 points, 14 assists, eight, or 14 goals, 18 assists. Uh, then he played in their J18 National League, which was six games, six goals, seven assists, 13 points. He also played in five playoff games where he had six points and a plus four. He also played in the J20 league where he played in 25 games, 8 goals, 4 assists, 12 points, 18 penalty minutes, and a plus 4. But he did not do well in the playoffs where he went 7 games, no goals, 4 assists, and a minus 2. Right. So it's. And, and to add, he's 17 playing against 20 year olds. Right. So that's actually not really that bad. Yeah. Um. So we'll see where, where that leads. Um, overall, Sharon's the one to watch, obviously. Right. Um, what's your thoughts now that we've had a year of Barry Trotz with the draft and with how things have run kind of not a, a, up to that point? You know, because it was literally the draft, and then, you know, last year, and then he took over. All right. So now that he's got a draft under his belt, you know, I mean, obviously we're not going to see the results of this draft for two, three years. Right. And then Nashville won't see it for another two, three from there. So, yeah. um, I mean, there's going to be some guys who may make it. And I know last year he had a heavy hand in the draft. Um picking what he wanted so uh, just curious do you do you think at any point he you know obviously it's been really forward heavy yeah um, we've been sat with defense for the last couple of years at least here in the NHL yeah and it's going to be a breath of fresh air to get some new guys in I'm not saying that we don't like who we got it's just you don't want to create a system log jam where guys get old and right. You want to give guys their opportunities when get their presented. Correct. Alrighty. So uh, that's all I got for that one. Um, beyond that, let's jump into some of the other stuff. All right. So let's talk about the big elephant in the room. Yaroslav Askarov traded. Mm -hmm. um, David Edstrom and Magnus Cora coming back um, for for him and uh, a first round pick, which that pick is. They believe top ten protected. So, if I remember reading that correctly. Um, you know, uh, just curious. Uh, coming back, you get you get that first. You gave up Colorado's third. Uh, going back to San Jose, it was going to be a late third, obviously. Mm -hmm. Depending on how Colorado does, on average, they're the top three in the division. Um, Enstrom, uh, he, uh, he's with Prolunda as well, so there's going to be a little bit of camaraderie there with uh, a couple of the prospects. Right. Um, He's 19, he's a setter, a uh, face-off specialist, dead front presence, and a two-way forward. Um, See, in my opinion, we need more net front presence players. Yes, at least in Milwaukee. Yeah. 
Now, I'm unaware that he signed for 2027. He is signed with the Preds. So... Did that, like, just happen? Because... Ah, he was signed last year. They just loaned him out. We'll see what Nashville does this year with him. Uh, last year in the Swedish Hockey League, uh, um, he had uh, 44 games played, 7 goals, 12 assists, 19 points to plus 12, as well as playing in 14 playoff games with 2 goals, 4 assists, 6 points to plus 4. Um, that's actually not too bad for an 18-year-old. Right. Um, now, and especially one who is, seems to be defensively minded. You know, um, defensive forwards are are not a dime a dozen, but right. they're, they're kind of are, but right. to find ones that can give you net front presence right. on the offense and defensive side would be very helpful. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see where that goes. Uh, then you got uh, Magnus Corona, or Cora, but I say Corona. Now, if every time he wins, they play my Corona, my Sharona, my Sharona, I, I will I will be happy. Uh, he's 23, 6'6", 216, catches left. Uh, he signed through this season. He was a fifth-round draft pick by the Tampa Bay Lightning last Tampa Bay Lightning draft pick we had that we got in a trade, ironically, was Connor Ingram. The last trade with the Sharks we had for a goalie was Troy Grosnick. So, track record not looking so bad there for our side. Yeah. I hate to say it, but I still would have loved to see the team of Ingram I, I agree there. Um, ironically, he has more NHL experience than Yarrow. Yeah. Yep. Nine games, 4.71 goals against average, 85.9 save percentage, and one six and one record. But he played for the Sharks. All right. A team who went winless for, what, a month? Right. You know? Um... San Jose Barracuda, who were the worst team in the league last year. Right. Um, he played 31 games, went 6, 17, and 6, went 89.4 save percentage. That's actually pretty solid, given the team he played on. Right. The Wichita Thunder, they weren't much better either. They actually finished worse than Atlanta. Right. And there he went 1-1-1. One and, oh, one and one. Um, this year he's projected to be with us, so we'll we'll see where it goes. Um, right. like speaking of the whole trade thing for with Yarrow, would you have been surprised to have seen the Preds maybe have worked out a deal with Columbus for him? I wouldn't have. I feel like that maybe would have been the other place for him. I know. I I think. That Barry Trotz's mindset here is kind of interesting, but I find it funny almost. Um, because, um, oh, you don't want to play for us? Here, I'll send you to the worst team in the league. All right. It's the same thing with Igor. Mm -hmm. Igor didn't want to play in Milwaukee one more year. Right. So, because you don't want to play in Milwaukee one more year, you're gone. Like, you got to understand, right, like, you gotta GM learn, you and the coaches do. tell you when you're ready now. Right, you got to learn, develop. When they see enough development, that's when they make the decision, hard decisions. And, and I understand, now, if you flip that coin, and you look at it from Yaroslav Askarov's point, I'd be happy if I was traded there, because I know I got a clear path to being a starter. Right. Maybe not this year. Right. But next year, I got a clear path to being a starter. Yeah. I may have to work my way through some bumps this year. 
that we're not gonna be any good. I mean, I mean, I knew something crazy was gonna happen once Saros was signed eight years. And then when we it, it the wasn't back. shorter than four, I was like, okay, something big's gonna happen. And then Dad, and you signed a backup for a two-year deal at one point five. You're not gonna pay him to play in the A. Right. So, and, you, and nobody's gonna take that either. So. You kind of just look at it as a situation of the writing on the wall for Yara was you have two years right. in Milwaukee. Right. And that's just something that, it, in a weird sense, um, I, I don't appreciate. Now, interesting part, the Preds also traded Cody Glass for Jordan Freshka. Yeah. Uh, Freshka has, well, for lack of a better term, been abysmal in his career. He's 23 years old, center. Uh, he went undrafted. He was not drafted. So we traded for an undrafted ECHLer. He has a total of in two years time it looks to be 11 games AHL now uh, what position is he again? he is a forward he is a center a set. oh maybe then it's also a look at the depth at this point too and because I'm actually not aware as of the current moment of how many of you know our players are going to end up assigned Exactly, and like I wouldn't be surprised if he did, right? Because you you want that depth all the way down to the E, yeah. And you know, with him, and and I hate to be rude about this in a way, but it was a captain, really, yeah. for for Glass to try and get Tomasino and Parson and resigned, right? So. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's a business. Yeah. But everybody's human too. We all gotta make a living. Yeah. All righty. So on to that. The Preds were very, very active. Yeah. As I said, they signed Scott Wedgwood. Wedgwood is thirty-two. 6-2, catches left. Um, he was drafted by the Devils in 2010. <laughs> um, last... Looks like he's bounced around all over for his career. Yep. Not trying to say anything negative about him. It's just some players, they bounce around their whole careers. And he was with Dallas last year, 32 games played. That's actually pretty impressive. Yeah, it is. Uh, for a backup, uh, 2.85 goals against average with an 89.9 save percentage, 16, 7, and 5. For my backup, I'll take that. Yeah, for sure. Um, then, uh, what else let's do? Ah, Brady Shea. The guy who got famous off of, what was that, Saturday Night Live? I think. He was with the Rangers at the time. Yeah. And they were doing this, that's a S, a K, a J, a E, and an I. That's a note. Let's mm -hmm. do that hockey thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, he got famous for that. He's 30, 6'3". Um, really? We're just going to do this today? Okay. Bye. Uh, Two-way defenseman, I think, if you really look at it. We haven't really had great luck with defensemen producing in the way that they, we want them to. Right. Now last year he he went 
13 goals, 34 assists, 47 game or 47 points, plus 15, 40 penalty minutes in 80 games. He it, it, and in the last three years, 82, 81, 80, out of 82 games, right? Like you've missed one or two games, right? Like I'm not gonna complain. Like even in 20. 1920, where still played 67 games in a shortened season. Right. I don't remember how many they played. 2021, 52 games. That was a tough year to play. Yeah. But he played. 82 with the Rangers in 2017, 80, 78, and, and 18, 19. So, 80 and 2016, 2017, where he also played in the World Cup. Like, for the Hartford Wolfpack in his first pro year, he played 68 games. Also played seven in the end. As well as five playoff games. So, like, he's about as consistent as they come. Right. Like, you know, the, the, the data has obviously shown that that is a that he's become that. Now they are paying him seven million till twenty thirty one. Right. By the time that's done, it'll be pushing forty. So there's that part too. Now I, I, I actually wanted to ask you a quick question, not related to him, but do you think in the time before the season this year, in for all the players and staff, we need to be focusing a little bit more maybe on strength and conditioning? We've kind of been hit with the injury bug twice in the last two years. Yes, and I, I do think it's it's part of the territory. Right. Hockey's probably one Hockey's of the most rough. Yeah. Hockey's probably one of the most physical games. On planet Earth, yeah. Um, I put it up there with rugby. Right. Like it and rugby are probably the two most physically demanding. And and don't get me wrong, I'm not, you know, trying to crap on another league or anything like that. But right. you know, if I did, you know, my thing is, if you look at it, these guys are. More, this takes more of a physical toll on you than football. Right. Because you're doing this from October to April. Right. On the short side. Right. From like 3, 4 in the morning to like midnight. Yep. Some days. Yeah, I mean, there are guys who get done with a game and go to the practice facility. Right. Like, you know, um, and I, I, I remember... Um, when I was a kid and played, I was one of them. I would, I would always stick around because everybody wanted a goalie to stick around. So, right. you know, you had somebody to practice with, and for me, it was free practice. So, I stuck around. Um, also, adding in two pretty big names now. Yeah. You know, um, that uh, that thing right there. <laughs> Uh, when you look up Jonathan Barsaso at Elite Prospects, the first thing you see is him holding the cup. Yeah. When he won the cup, he won the Conn Smythe. <coughs> 33, signed through 2028-29. He's 5'9", shoots right-handed, plays left or right wing. Um, he's got an AHL championship, an NHL championship. He won the Conn Smythe. He won in the Quebec Major Juniors. He's won a silver medal in the World Championship. Just saying, the guy's a winner. Right. It's what he does. You know. And and if you really look at it, like last year, forty goals, twenty seven assists, sixty nine points, played in the playoffs, two goals, four two assists, four points plus right. one. I think Nashville got a lot better. Just even right. take away the next guy. I think with him, they got better. Him and Shea, they got better. In the last five years, he's played at least 55 games. And and that's and has it gone under 40 points? Right. Like, that's the other part. 
that's also important is he produces. I mean, what was the last time he... Uh, 2015, 2016, he played 45 games, had 18 points. But, like, even in the A, he had 67 points right. and 68 games. Like, 40, 60... Oh, God. I would like to forget that happened. I didn't need to be reminded of that. I forgot they were even a team. <laughs> uh, and he had 64 points for the Connecticut Whale back in 2011-2012. I uh, <laughs> That was a horrible experience for Hartford Wolfpack fans. They tried it. It failed. Now, this was the one where I was pretty much jumping up and down for joy. You got your perennial scorer, Steven yeah. Stamkos. It, it's still... Who I never thought would leave Tampa. I thought he'd play his whole career there. I watched the NHL 25 trailer the other day, and they were queuing up one-timers with Stamkos uh-huh. in a Preds jersey, and I'm just like... It still feels weird. <laughs> um, he's 34. He signed through 27, 28. He's definitely a leader, definitely a power play specialist, and definitely a sniper. Um, n- name what he hasn't done right. <laughs> other than win an AHL championship, which, to my recollection, he never even touched the ice in the A. Never. Yeah. Never had a season under 40 points. Except for that one where he was injured. I don't count that one. He was out that whole season. I mean, you look at it. And the crazy thing is, like, you have a lot of big names and a lot of leaders now, and it's like, who's going to end up being the captain and the assistants at this point? It's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see, I should say. I am very curious to how Bruno handles the lineup. Yeah. Um, you know, looking at it from this perspective, and, and, and even when you, I mean, the guy is so skilled offensively. Yeah. What's it? He got 555 NHL goals. Yeah. And over a thousand games played. Yeah, like, there is not a single moment where I'm like, this isn't going to work out. Right. This isn't going to work. You know, like, it is blatantly obvious that Nashville offered him the money he was worth. Right. And, and I mean it, because 80 points, 40 goals, 41 assists. Right. That's, and he's still getting paid less than Forsberg. Yeah. So, and, like, you think about it, two deep runs in the playoffs, I'm sure he wants to lift the cup again. Right. And, you know, it, it's interesting to me that Pekka said that Soros will be the one that leads us to the cup. Mm-hmm. Look at our situation. Right. It's going to have to be now. Right. Because if we end up rebuilding at any point, anytime soon, because we bomb, there's going to be some very unhappy fans with that Yaroslav Askarov trade. Yeah. However, if I'm Barry Trotz walking into the trade deadline next year with cap room, very little cap room, and going, um, I have a lot of first round picks. Would you be willing to eat one of our players' caps? Right. You know, and, and that's just that simple. Um, I'm trying to see if I'm missing anything else. Uh, Carrier re-signed. I believe that was a two-year deal. Statsy re-signed for a two-year deal. Jankowski's coming back. Karen's coming back. Go back. So on and so forth. I am more interested now than ever to see if Gustav Nyquist has a repeat deal. Yeah. Because they paid him a lot of money. 
Um, I also wouldn't be surprised to see maybe Sissons on the move at some point to make cap room. Yeah. I know I like Colton Sissons. I, I love his leadership. I love his ability. I love his grit. But at what point do you have to make way for you? Right. You know? And the other thing is you don't want to jam the youth in development either when they're ready. Nope. Now, what do we have here? Oh, good lord. Uh, I don't even think any of our guys have been assigned yet. Well, no, but I'm just looking. Ah, Carson Didimani, uh, I know who that is. He signed with Atlanta. Um, Blake Murray played for us that one year. Michael Marcheson played for the Wolves a couple years, so that ought to be interesting. Uh, Zach Yoder and, uh, and uh, Braden Dakema, those two boys are, oof, they, uh, they like to thump. Uh, not something I'm really afraid of. Now, here's this. Admirals, um, these are not a sign, but this is just your projected roster. Right. All right, so Magnus Coral, we talked a little about him. But we got a free agent signing, too. And in the goalie department, we're very familiar with him. You know, Matthew Murray, a.k.a. Matt Murray. He's 26 years old, 6'1", catches left. Um, he's won. I believe he won. A, he went to the... No. Wait. They didn't win it that year. What's this? Oh, the AJHL. Uh, he won the NCAA championship with Denver and two-time NCAA Hockey East champion. Or not Denver. That was Cora. I know it was In Boston. Fargo. All right. So last year for the Texas Stars, he had 31 games played with a 3.02 goals against average with an 89.6 save percentage, 14, 15, and 2. So he had a losing record. However, he went to the Dallas Stars and had one game played. So he has some NHL experience as well. Um, quite a bit of experience with us. Um, with having... Um, Remy Poirier over there in the Stars organization. I, I just don't see no. where he would fit currently. Um, now, this is just projected, but you got Nick Blankberg, who is a new guy. Uh, Chad Nychuk, who is signed to an AHL deal. Um, Kiefer Bellows, who is signed to an NHL deal. Uh, Vinny Hidestroza, who signed to an NHL deal. Jake Luchin, who signed to an NHL deal. It really does feel like they're trying to load us up and bringing back Ozzy Weissblatt. Right. So let's see what these guys bring to the table. Nick Blankberg, other known as Nicholas Blankberg. Blankenberg. Uh, 26 years old, 5'9", shoots right-handed. A right-handed shot defenseman. Well, hello. <laughs> mm -hmm. He signed for two years, one year, two way, one year, one way. I understand that part. He played for the Columbus Blue Jackets for 12 games, had one goal, and played for 24 games with the Cleveland Monsters, where he had three goals, 10 assists, 13 points, plus seven with 22 penalty minutes. He had one playoff game where he went minus one. Chad Nychuk. Is that the Kingston Frontenacs? Oh, well. He's out of Rossburg, Manitoba. 23 years old. 6 foot 1. Shoots left-handed. He won one-time World Western Hockey League East, which makes no sense. Second team All-Star. Um... 
Last year, he played for the Abbotsford Canucks, had 13 games played, two goals, one assist, three points, and a minus, or zero on the plus minus, but played for the Kalamazoo K-Wings, or Wings as they're called now. I remember right. where they were, the K-Wings. Right. Um, 24 games played, one goal, 11 assists, 12 points, minus one. Played four playoff games where he had two goals, one assist, three points, minus one. Minus one I can live with. Kiefer Bellows played last year for the Toronto Marlies. He signed through a one-year deal. 52 games played. He had uh, 27 goals, 22 assists, 49 points. He didn't do jack in the playoffs in three years. However, Toronto decimated their AHL during the playoffs. Yeah. This year, supposedly, he will be playing with the Admirals. Now, this one is one where if he gets signed, assigned here, I might actually put a, a, a name to a back of one of my jerseys. Because just to irritate my friend, who's a Ice Hogs fan, and he's right out of um, Melrose Park, Illinois. Mm -hmm. he, he played for the Ice Hogs. <laughs> He's a right-handed shot, and that's Vinny Hinnestroza. Very, very, very known well with Vinny Hinnestroza. He played for the Buffalo Sabres, who, um, when I started getting into hockey, they were my game. Um, that was back in uh, 1994. I became a fan of the Buffalo Sabres. So, I predate the Preds on that one. <laughs> um, the minute the Preds came in the league, I really jumped and haven't paid a whole lot of attention to the Sabres. But I still pay attention from time to time on how they are doing. And my family's all from Buffalo, so I get a pass. <laughs> um... He played 42 games with the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins last year. Uh, 60 goals, 19 assists, 35 points. He did play in two playoff games where he had three assists. No, nothing on the plus minus four penalty minutes. Um, Jake Lucchini. Another one of them Pittsburgh guys, huh? I think uh, Nashville wanted to add some grit during that, during the playoffs. Mm -hmm. I do. They they see the Admirals going in a specific way, and there's just this roadblock in the way. All righty. So last year he played 40 games for the Wild, two goals, three assists, five points minus three. He played 30 games in the A for the Iowa Wild with 11 goals, 12 assists, 23 points minus four. So, Admirals fans, you should be well acquainted. Beyond that, let's get into the goons. Because they both come from our division. Kyle Marino plays forward and defenseman. No. Right-handed shot. Signed through 2026. AHL deal. Last year played for the Wolves. 65 games. One goal, three assists, 12, minus 12, but a whopping wild 114 penalty minutes. The year before that, played for the Henderson Silver Knights, where he had 91 penalty minutes. In 2021, he played for the Wolves, where he had 24 games and 82 penalty minutes in 24 games. Mm -hmm. What did you do, sir? Who hurt you? <laughs> ah, you lived in Alaska, that's why. Ah, <laughs> uh, you are from Niagara Falls, Ontario. Nice little town. Alrighty, Kale Holworth, who played for the Rockford Ice Hogs last season. He is 27 years old, 6'5", 201, left-handed shot. Like I said, played for the Ice Hogs last year. Seven games, one assist, minus three. No penalty minutes. Huh? 
I swear I saw him fight last year. Or was that in 23? Oh, probably in 23. He spent the last three years with the Ice Hawks, so he is very well acclimated within our division. You know? Um, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, looks like the Admirals stocked up on size and grit, which is obviously something we lacked in the playoffs last year. Yeah. I mean, Schaefer, with Angelo out with an injury, um, it, it just didn't help. Um, guy I'm most interested in seeing this year is Ryan Ufko. Uh, Ufko. Ufko, I want to see what you got. Uh, Kemmel, just so you know, it's, it's now or never for you. You've shown that you can be the two-way player, but you got to get back to scoring goals. Yeah. Um, I'm interested to see what Alexander Campbell does as he chose to sign an AHL deal compared to signing his NHL contract. Right. Um, Mutter, eh. Uh, Austin Gross, interested to see that. Young player. Ozzy Weissblatt, good to see. I want to see what he can do with a full year. Right. Um, so, so given those things, um, what in your perspective is holding us from doing the unthinkable, which is uh, <laughs> winning both? <laughs> I, I think it would be injuries, obviously, but injuries for sure. That definitely has been hurting us the last two years. And I mean, we have the depth, but it seems like we don't have the size the last couple of years we needed either. No, I mean, it, it seemed like Coachella would come up here, come here and just smack us around. Now, we had the skill to beat them. Right. Which did Plus, not there were a lot of injuries for us in the playoffs. Yeah, that uh, yeah, are getting hurt, which I still don't understand why people say he lost the job when he got hurt, but he kind of did when he closed one that Texas player, even though I cheered for that because he stole his stick. Right. But I get it. You you got to be more than understand that it's more than just I get you're mad, but you got to play the game kind of thing. So, as much as I, I I'm still a fan of Yarrow. I'm still going to be a fan oh, yeah, of Yarrow. I'm going to follow him. I'm going to follow him his whole career. Right. There's, there's nothing stopping me from doing that. Right. Just like I, I've been really proud of how Ingram has stepped up given his opportunities. Yes. Yeah, so, we, we do follow the guys that, that move on from here. And, and I think that looking forward this year, there's a lot of questions, but there's also a lot of security. Right. I think that the that, that we feel safer this year, not not maybe from the perspective of the goalie and I mean Yarrow. Once they signed that contract, I was just like, just get it over with. Right. As soon as we even said we're not coming back till it's all done. Right. And well, I mean, one thing I don't want to see happen with Nashville that happens too often with. Avalanche is a revolving door of goals. Yeah, I mean, the A, that's fine, but at the NHL level, <laughs> right. Like, we need Sorrows to have a good year, try and not get injured. I I, th I do think that his stamina and, and everything, he's a great player. Yeah. I don't think that he's Hall of Fame player, but I think he's a great player. Yeah. So... There's that. Um, beyond that, uh, Scott Ford getting an NHL coaching gig. Yeah. Uh, assistant coach with uh, Dean Evanson. <laughs> Have fun with that, Fordo. Be sure to bring lots of bubble gum. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget the hubba bubba. <laughs> <laughs> and just remember, if he turns red, run. <laughs> Uh, we joke, we joke, but Dean Evanson was a, is another Admirals alum who got another coaching gig, um, you know, and uh, Fordo deserved it. Um, didn't really get to get there as a player, 
Right. Um, this is, I couldn't be happier for him. Yeah, me neither. You know, it, 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 it sucks as a, a fan, and from a fan's perspective. Now, to the final part of our, our things, there have been a lot of changes, but one of them was a look. Mm-hmm. The red jersey of uh, that one. Yeah. What did you think of the Admirals coming out with a secondary to their fullback look? I think the red jersey should have been used from the get-go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with the cream-colored one, but... It's just overdone. Yeah. The Bucks do it. The Brewers do it. We're just like, ah, I'm done with it. I get where the cream city, but geez. plus up until last year, most of the times, unfortunately, that we wore those, we lost. <laughs> yeah, last year for whatever reason, every time they wore them and I wore the jersey, we won. Right. I was just like, huh? I'm like, y'all got to give me the four one one on this scoop because I got to know what I got to wear to go into the game. So, you know, out of all fun, you know, um, Yarrow, thank you. Um, yeah. You know, did the Preds have any big movers that they lost? <sighs> you know, because... And I honestly think the first change in a new assistant coach here in Milwaukee might bring a breath of fresh air to you. Matt Donovan just announced his retirement, literally. Oh. New assistant coach for the Admirals, Matt Donovan. <laughs> yeah, that'd be funny. That or Cal. Well, Cal's playing this year, so. Right. Donovan would make sense. He lives here still. Um, he holds the hockey camps here. Right. Um, but yeah, Matt Donovan, uh, literally, we just clicked on it. The first thing we see. You know, um, anything else? All right, now he's in jail. There it is. That's breaking. Yeah. Twenty four twenty five assistant coach AHL according Mol- to Elite Prospect. Yeah, according to Elite Prospect. Breaking news. While we're recording. Right. We're not even live. But Alrighty, um, we have some other stuff we have to get to now, so, <laughs> uh, we thank you, uh, what's your thought on Donovan now, uh, according to this, we've really got a, <laughs> we're on the spot now, yeah, it, it'll definitely be interesting, um, you know, uh, I had a friend tell me the other day that Donovan should be the coach, yeah, I think even you were saying it at one point, yeah, like, Donovan would be an interesting, like, he's got the leadership, he's familiar with here, defensive-minded player, good leader, um, any verification? I know, that's what I was Yep, like. there it is. Admiral's, uh, their social media just posted it. Yep. It came from the Admiral's app personal. <laughs> yeah, I see that on my phone, too. So, yes, Donovan, the Admiral's new assistant coach. So, uh... Yes, we have a graphic ready. No, my computer is not with me, so expect the graphic later. <laughs> Alrighty, welcome, and thank you, and have a great day.